What a wonderful way to start the service with songs of praise. A very good morning to you from a very cloudy and breezy uh, rectory garden.
good to be with you, good to see you with us, and it's good to be able to come together as the family of God to worship and praise Him. I greet you with a blessing. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Thank you for that. Uh, we are going to start and sing a good um, intro hymn. I just need to find it here quickly. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. The Wednesday people will enjoy this. To those who are greeting us, it's good to see those who have joined us for this service. Good to see you greeting one another as well. Um, yes, indeed. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. We continue, as we say together, praise the Lord. Praise, praise him, you servants, servants of the Lord. Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed, Blessed be, be his, his name. name now and forever. We're going to say the Gloria this morning. We say together, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In, in the, the glory, glory of God, God the Father. Amen.
Jesus taught us that the greatest commandment is to love God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. Today, in lockdown, that is a little bit easier than normal. He also taught us to love our neighbours as we love ourselves. And maybe that is a little bit more difficult. But remember, Jesus also said that if you think, if you bear a grudge in your heart, you are committing murder. So if you think something, you are sinning. We ask the Holy Spirit now to bring to mind times where we have failed God, where we have indeed sinned. And so let us confess together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please say with me the collect for the week. We say together, Eternal, Eternal God, God, your Lord Son Lord Jesus Christ Lord is the way, the truth, the truth and, and the life of for all, all creation. creation. Grant us grace to walk in his way, rejoice in his truth, and share his risen life, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We say the COVID collect. Lord, Lord God, bless the world. Give it wisdom at this time. Grant us relief and release. Be with those who are ill and bless the carers fighting this pandemic. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Today is also the remembrance of Elizabeth Paul. Um, I don't have anything to share about her right now. I have mislaid my Saints and Seasons book, but we'll pray the collect in her memory. Almighty God, you anointed your servant Elizabeth Paul for the ministry of healing. Fill your church with your Holy Spirit that we may be faithful ministers of the wholeness which is ours in your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm going to ask Elaine to read our first reading for us. Thank you. The, the first reading is from Acts chapter 15, verses 1 to 6, the council at Jerusalem. Certain people came down from Judea to Antioch and were teaching the believers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom taught by Moses, you cannot be saved. This brought Paul and Barnabas into sharp dispute and debate with them. So Paul and Barnabas were surprised were appointed, along with other believers, to go up to Jerusalem to see the apostles and elders about this question. The church sent them on their way, and as they travelled through Phoenicia and Samaria, they told how the Gentiles had been conver converted. This news made all the believers very glad. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and elders to whom they reported everything God had done through them. Then some of the believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees stood up and said, 
the Gentiles must be circumcised and required to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and elders met to consider this question. Here ends the first lesson. We'll say Psalm 122. Gents, if we can read the odd-numbered verses. Uh, ladies, if you can respond with even-numbered verses, please. I rejoiced with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statute given to Israel. There stand the thrones for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Glory, Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and, and to the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is, is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. We share in the Gospel now, don't worry about standing. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to John, chapter 15, starting at verse 1. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Lord, this morning as we gather together to share in your word, we thank you for the words that you've given, Christelle. Thank you, Lord, that they have been anointed. And our prayer is that they will land on fertile soil and that they will bear much fruit. We pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will dwell among us, will move among us, wherever we are, and bring transformation, renew our hope, and bring revival. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Christelle, you are up. Thank you. Good morning everyone, I'm so glad you could join today. I would like to focus on a few key points that stood out for me in today's Gospel reading. Jesus being the true vine, God being the gardener, remaining in Jesus and lastly bearing fruit. There are about 44 verses about vine and 60 verses about vineyard in the Bible. The Old Testament frequently refers to Israel as being a vine that God planted. In Psalm 80, verse 8 to 9, the psalmist says to God, 
You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. You cleared the ground for it. It took deep root and filled the land. You may recall the words of God spoken to his people through Jeremiah when they started forsaking him. I planted you as a choice vine from the purest stock. How then did you turn degenerate and become a wild vine? Harsh words from God indeed. The Gospel of John refers to Jesus not simply as the vine, but more specifically as the true vine. The implication is that in contrast to Israel, which became unfaithful and incurred the judgment of God, Jesus remains faithful and thus fulfills Israel's calling to be the vine of God. Let's now look at God the gardener. The consequence of not bearing fruit is quite simple, really. In verse 2, we read, God the gardener will cut off every branch that doesn't bear fruit. In verse 6, Jesus says, You will be like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burnt. Certainly, no mincing of words in these verses. God, however, does not only cut out and destroy dead wood, but what really struck me is God's response to the person who is bearing fruit. Every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. I kind of get this, as I'm a gardener too. I love roses. They give me great joy. I think the most beautiful roses are at the wimpy outside Harry Smith. They are just too gorgeous in summer. In winter, however, they are severely pruned to about a height of 10 inches. They need to be pruned in order for them to bloom so prolifically in summer. As I understand it, fruit trees and bushes should be pruned for several reasons. We prune so they can bear more fruit. We prune to make them healthier. And we prune to give them a better shape. Pruning also takes at least three different forms. Firstly, we cut out dead branches, as dead branches can injure the other healthy branches. Secondly, we cut off branches that are too long and straggly. If a branch is too long, it is weak and easily broken. It cannot get enough nourishment to the fruit or leaves. And thirdly, pruning stimulates new growth and gives the plant a bushier, healthier look. Those same, same things apply to us when God prunes us. Think about it. Sometimes we have dead wood in our lives that needs to be removed. There are influences or habits in our lives that are ungodly. You cannot bear much fruit if you let the dead wood of sin remain in your life. God also prunes back straggly branches. Sometimes we have areas of our life where we are weak, where we are, we've overextended ourselves. God prunes us back. It might not seem so nice at the time, but he doesn't want us to break. He takes care of his plants so that they can bear much fruit. Sometimes we are imbalanced. Specific plants need pruning and still need to be balanced in themselves. If we are not strong on patience or faith or prayer, it may be hindering those areas where we are strong. God may prune us so that our Christian life is more balanced, that we grow in our areas of weakness, so that we can shine more in our areas of strength. It can hurt to be pruned, to be called by God and forced by God to work on some area of weakness, but God prunes us for our own good. I'm sure many of you have experienced times of pruning, but when you look back, you can see how much more you have grown and bloomed. Remain is used eight times in the gospel passage, so I suspect Jesus really wanted to emphasize this point. So, what does it mean to remain in Christ? For me, it means to draw your nourishment from him daily, to fill yourself with him, to make him the heart of your existence and hope and life. Like a garden, we need to feed and water our spirit to grow more fruit. This we do through spending time with him, not only in his word and in prayer, 
but in a day-to-day -day relationship. Let's now look at how the message translates the word remain. Live in me. Make your home in me. Just as I do in you. In the same way that a branch can't bear grapes by itself, but only by being joined to the vine. You can't bear fruit unless you are joined with me. Let's look at another passage, John 15, verse 7, translated in the message. But if you make yourselves at home with me, and my words are at home in you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. What a wonderful picture we have here. So to summarize, how do we remain in Jesus? We live in Jesus. We make our home in him. We are joined to and with him. We make ourselves at home with him. And then his words will be at home in us. Let's now look at bearing fruit. We must remember the context of this passage. It was just before the Passover. Jesus had already washed the feet of his disciples and had been preparing them for the time when he would no longer be with them. In chapter 14, he comforts them and promises the Holy Spirit. He then tells them that he is the vine and they are the branches who need to bear much fruit to demonstrate their discipleship. He wanted them ultimately to go and make disciples of all nations, as we read in Matthew 28 verse 19. Fruit is mentioned seven times in this passage, so again, a very important concept that Jesus is trying to bring across to his disciples. We know that Paul speaks about the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, which we as Christians must all aspire to. But what exactly does Jesus mean by fruit at this point? Firstly, we are told that we are the branches and Jesus the vine, so we should therefore reflect the fruit of Jesus and not of ourselves or the world. Some of Jesus' characteristics that sprang to mind were He was compassionate. He never looked away from people. He understood their needs and sought to address them. He was a servant. Although he had the authority to get anything he wanted, he chose to serve instead. He was loving. He displayed his great love by dying for our sins. He was forgiving. Even as he was dying on the cross, he asked the Father to forgive them because they did not know what they were doing. He was committed. He did not let any of the many obstacles he had get in his way of achieving his goals. He was prayerful. No matter how busy things got, he found the time to be alone and pray. He showed no bias. He mixed with children, with outcasts, with adulterers, tax collectors, religious leaders, crippled and diseased people. In fact, no one was excluded. He was patient. His disciples often doubted him. The religious leaders often attacked him. The crowds would not leave him alone. But despite all of this, he kept his composure and responded appropriately. He had great self-control. Think about his temptation for 40 days in the wilderness. And he was humble. He had every right to demand praise for all the miracles he performed, but he never did. He was born in a stable, entered Jerusalem on a donkey, and hung out with sinners. Wow, what a role model we have. In times like these, it is sometimes difficult to try and be like Jesus. But we must remember that as fruitful believers, we are not spiritually controlled by our environment. We all experience trials and pain, but those who are filled with the Spirit do not lose his fruit because of their situations. They keep their joy even when difficulties overwhelm. I 
do hope that all of us will not only display blooms in this time, but that we'll exude the beautiful fragrance of Jesus. Amen. May we pray. Lord, I pray that I may grow in grace and increase in Christ-likeness day by day. I pray that in every area of my life I may become more fruitful and learn to grow more like the Lord Jesus Christ with each passing day. Lord, I know that there is much within me that needs to be rooted out, refined and removed, and I ask that you will examine my inner heart to discover any areas of my life that need to be hammered on the anvil of your corrective love. Search me, Lord, and examine my heart and my attitudes. Help me to keep my old fleshy self and the old sinful nature nailed to the cross of Christ. May I decrease in my own eyes so that Christ may increase in me. This I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's now reflect on the words of this beautiful song.
Thank you, Christelle, for those words, as Jane says. Thank you for the encouragement and for reminding us that we are indeed to remain, to abide in Christ, is another word that is used. Elena has got some news from Lukatula, and we will then spend some time in prayer. I got this really heartwarming message from Nokotula yesterday. Um, hello sis, sorry I've been quiet in the last few days. One of my students is presenting her research proposal on Thursday and I've been trying to help her finalise everything. Oh, the excitement of being able to help my students again is beyond words. I was telling God this morning that I don't have enough words to thank him. Otherwise, I'm fine and coping with everything. Yes, I do feel pain sometimes, but from mid-April I have observed positive changes in my body. Oh God, I can eat. I sometimes think that maybe if everything was fine in my life, I wouldn't see and appreciate God the way I do now from Nakatula. Let's pray for Kathy, Anukatula, for Gillian Taylor, uh, keeping in mind um, Sean Blythe and Anita, also Brian Sigamini, Alvin's son, who is doing better, but definitely in need of prayer. We pray too for all those who are infected and affected by the coronavirus. <clears throat> and so we pray, keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. We also pray for the leadership of each province and of our country. We pray that they may be taking the right decisions. We pray that they will work and act under God's wisdom where it is possible to release the lockdown so that the economy may continue, where the number of cases continue to be high, to work out what can be done about it. While we think about what can be done, bearing in mind the message today, Adele is suggesting a prayer walk. Um, she has floated it past me. It will be under strict um, social distancing protocols, masks two meters apart during exercise time on May the 31st. Um, I think the time she mentioned was 7 to 8 um, between St. Thomas and uh, St. Thomas Road um, on Pentecost Day. That's, that's the critical part of it. If you are at all interested or if you want to know more, do contact Adele directly. But I thank you for, I thank you Lord for planting that seed. And if it is meant to be, yes, Lord, you will, you will take it further. I'd just like to remind us all to remember the people um, who are starving. Um, we had a request for prayer recently for a fella in Ethiopia. And he's, he just said, you know, we can't get out to work, so we have no food and we are starving. And I think that that represents not a few people, but hundreds of thousands of people. 
who are just going to starve because of the lockdown. And so please hold these people up in your prayers and pray that they would find some way to, to help them. And similarly, there is this, the same problem of starvation in our country. And working under the uh, Berea Interfaith Forum, we are providing meals for many. If you would like to contribute to that, please make the EFT to the church. And as your reference, put your name and um, BIF, and we'll know where to put that. Thank you. I pray, Lord God, in this season of fear and uncertainty, as we face the threat of the coronavirus, grant us the wisdom and determination to walk in one another's shoes. The confidence and the humility to draw closer to you and to those affected. Empower us to pass to those who are ill, to weep for the dead, to support the leaders and the healers, and to care for and love one another. We thank you, Lord, for the frontline workers. And we ask, Lord, that you will continue to protect them, but give them compassion as they share their lives with the ill. And Lord, for us, I pray that you will continue to fill us with hope, even as you refill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may know the hope that we can share with others. And we pray this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please say the Lord's Prayer together with me. You may use the language of your choice. Our Amen. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Time to receive communion. And again, I ask that you pray the singular pronoun. I'll pray the plural pronoun as we pray our spiritual communion prayer together. Jesus, may, may all, all that, that is you flow, flow into, into us. May, may your body and blood be our food and drink. drink. May, may your passion and death be our strength and life. Jesus, Jesus with, with you by our, our sides, enough, enough has, has been given. given. May, may the shelter we seek be the shadow of your cross. Let us not run from the love which you offer, but hold us safe from the forces of evil. On each of our dyings, shed your light and your love. Keep calling to us until that day comes when, with your saints, we may praise you forever. Amen. Take Ralph, uh, before we get there. Let's pray the prayer for South Africa. God bless Africa. Guard our children, guide our leaders, and give us peace for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. And we say the prayer of self-offering. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. In the power of the Holy Spirit, Enable us to live to your praise, praise and glory. Pat Ralph plays our recessional hymn today, Guide Me, O Thou Great Redeemer.
for that lovely rendition and as we go remember that um, Jen leads us today in our reflection at midday please do join her it'll be good to be there with Jen in that um, and so go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In, In the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Be well, stay well, and uh, we'll be in touch by phone, by WhatsApp, by SMS, by email. And remember to contact Dali if you're interested. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <clears throat>